Project Guru. 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 Welcome to Novorussia Rocks Radio Station. This is Zach Novak, your American in downtown Donetsk. Project Guru and Gurus in the house. And my lovely co host, Natalia. Natalia, say hello to the world. Hello, world. I love her voice. Now, before we continue with some news,、uh, very interesting the past two days. Actually, today is the independence, the independence of Donbass, the liberation of Donbass from the Nazi fascist regime, the German machine of World War II, and also from last year's battle against the Kiev. Poroshenko Kiev regime forces. So, two battles at this incredible place, a mystical place.、Uh, I was there yesterday、uh, called、uh, Saud Magila, according to Natalia. That is、uh, Saud, Saud's tomb, correct? Yes. And、um, if you're a traveler, please make it、uh, a special journey. Uh, it, it's a, it should be like a, a Mecca to see this place.、Uh, it, it's an incredible place.、Uh, you feel it as soon as you, you step on the grounds, and once you get to the top of the hill, uh, it, uh, it just brings shivers down your spine. Two bloody wars.、Uh, you can actually find shrapnel. There's shrapnel everywhere, pieces of shrapnel of different sizes you can actually take, ho- take home as、uh, souvenirs. But.、Uh, Uh, atrocious, very bloody.、Um, and again,、uh, the holiday is today, the liberation.、Uh, but、uh, everybody celebrated it on Monday, a huge gathering, a huge gathering, and、uh, to celebrate the, the freedom and the liberation from Nazis, the, the fascist regime.、Uh, to talk about it is my lovely co host, Natalia.、Uh, please tell us more about. Saud Magilia, Saud's tomb.、Uh, thanks, Zak, a lot about、uh, telling of this、uh, magnificent event for Donbass. You are absolutely right. Today, on the 8th、uh, September, our citizens、uh, every year, each year, celebrate this、um, honorable、uh, event when our ancestors,、uh, grandfathers, and great grandfathers、uh, they did everything to liberate us. Our children from German Nazis. And、um, last year, you are absolutely right. Again, history repeated.、Uh, due to Poroshenko and、uh, Obama regimes,、uh, they pushed、uh, all、uh, heavy artillery, key of art- artillery to this our tomb. And、uh, our militias, they did a lot.、Uh, Much efforts、uh, to resist them, and finally, they uh, liberated uh, this Saur tomb. It was、uh, magnificent because they didn't have that moment uh, such uh, heavy weapons,、uh, artillery, but they protected. They、uh, knew that、uh, our ancestors liberated、uh, our native region, and、uh, we. Do not have such right to give up. We have to ignore these people、uh, who liberated uh, us uh, in 1943. And、uh, in this war, we do not have right、uh, to give up. We have to defeat、uh, fascism once again. Thank you. Natalia, that was、uh, beautiful. Now, now, she mentioned two points, very important. The spirit and the blood of the veterans of、uh, the Great Patriotic War,、uh, World War II. Yes, the spirit and the blood, it still flows to these people today. And that's what made them so strong on the battlefield of last year. Now, what she's also trying to say is how, how surrounded there was about 30 to 40 men out there, brave men, 30 to 40 men holding this. This hill. Let me explain to you about、uh, Saur Magila, Saur's tomb. It is a high, one of the highest plateaus in all of the Donetsk region and a strategic、uh, military point in a sense, in a military sense. So, a very important strategic point、uh, to have this position. 30 to 40 men out there, Novorussia army, holding this point, holding this hill against hundreds of hundreds of 
Nazi Ukrainian forces of Poroshenko's regime surrounded, dying, holding on. They actually had to call in command center to have their position bombed, their own position to be bombed, to be shelled. And guess what? That's what happened. A few made it out alive, but the victory, the tears, the blood, the people will never, never, never forget this historical moment two historical moments, the Patriotic War and last year. It is unbelievable the bravery of these men and women to hold that point, to be shelled by their own army just to to make it out. And they did. Unbelievable. Celebration, liberation, independence, Donbass. Thank you. We'll be right back with the news. Let's get some news. No attacks from Kiev, Nazi regime, peace for the last 24 hours, and Minsk talks to continue. No shellings by the Nazi Kiev regime forces have been registered on the territory of Donetsk People's Republic overnight. The night was calm. Kiev regime forces did not bother us, bother us at all. This, according to the Delamanovsky District Administrator Sergei Ivanov. Local authorities of the Yasinovata, Novozayovsky, Amvriovsky, and Starobyevsky districts confirmed also there were no shellings. The ceasefire was also observed in the towns of Dobeltsevo, Gorlovka, Dukuchayevsk, and Makievka. The night in Donetsk was calm as well. Everything is quiet and calm. Petrovsky District Administrator Head Maxim Zhukovsky said at the meeting of the contact group in Minsk on August 26th, the participants confirmed their plans to ensure a ceasefire in Donbass by September 1st. Due, due to our children going back to school, our children. OSCE Special Representative in Ukraine Martin Sajik said that it is necessary for ensuring, for ensuring security at schools along the contact line. Over the last days, only few violations of ceasefire regime were registered in Donbass. OSCE. Martin Sajik, the children are back in school. Make sure, make sure a ceasefire exists. Stop the bombs. I know you can control Kiev. Tell them to stop the bombs. Also, authorities of Donetsk People's Republic pin big hopes on meeting of the contact group for setting the armed civil conflict in Donbass that is due to be held in Minsk today, according to the DPR representative of the talks, Denis Pushilin. There's a big hope the subgroup for security will put a period to work on the document that regulates the pullback of heavy weapons and the initialing of the document is quite possible, stated Pushilin. This will mark a very serious step towards an end to this war. On the whole, the agenda of the meetings in Minsk remains very much the same, but the DPR officials continue trusting in the importance of the Minsk talks, even though the effects of these negotiations have been moderate so far. The contact group and its four subgroups are expected to have a new round of consultations, and that is in Minsk, and that is today. Guru, Andre, interesting news uh, the past two days. The Kiev regime threatens two priests two priests they threatened two priests even with hanging now this is coming from their news but listen to this the security service of ukraine that's the ssu has issued warnings to two priests in the Zhitomir region for according to them pro-russian propaganda the ssu press service said on monday the security service of ukraine noted that the relatives listen to this guru andre the relatives of mobilized peasants mobilized peasants were ready to lynch the two priests they were ready to hang the priests employees of the security service of ukraine have issued official warnings to the two clergymen who conducted anti-government propaganda among parish uh, parishioners in support of russia and against ukraine this according to ssu it did not specify to which patriot uh, the two priests belonged to According to the Kiev law enforcers, the Nazi law enforcers, the senior priest of one of the rural churches, according to the Kiev regime, distributed among believers printouts 
of anti-Ukrainian articles from Russian websites, as well as video footage of similar content. In addition to that, the priest is suspected of refusing to hold prayer service for the health of mobilized warriors. Another priest, according to the SSU, abusing his authority among the congregation, repeatedly defended the necessity of Ukraine's federalization during the services. The necessity of Ukraine's federalization during the services. Did you hear that? That actually means the priests want peace, okay? Leave those people in Donbass alone. That's all they wanted. That's, that, that, that's all they were preaching. The security service of Ukraine noted that the relatives of mobilized peasants were ready to lynch to hang the two priests. As a result, the SSU warned the priests of criminal responsibility for crimes against the foundations of national security. And this, Obama supports this regime. Now you want to hang priests who just preaching peace. Guru, Andre, let me tell you how evil this Kiev regime is, Poroshenko's regime, the one that Obama is sponsoring. Listen to this. Kiev regime forces has kidnapped 15 citizens of the Donetsk People's Republic. Did you hear that? 15 residents of the Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, have been illegally detained by Nazi Ukrainian forces or gone missing over the last week. DPR Office of Human Rights Ombudsperson Daria Morozova said on Monday, the Office of Human Rights of the Donetsk People's Republic registered 15 people gone missing or being illegally detained from August 29th to September 4th. Among them are nine civilians, that's nine civilians and six DPR servicemen. The office stressed that the DPR authorities that demonstrate readiness to compromise are waiting for confirmation of Kiev's serious intentions to implement the Minsk agreements. Prisoner exchange on all-for-all basis is one of the key points of the package of measures on implementation of the Minsk agreement signed in Minsk on February 12th. This was signed. The package of measures, uh, it, it sets in pardon and amnesty by adopting a law banning persecution and punishment of residents for events in Donbass. The Vinsk Accords were signed on February 12th after negotiations in the so-called Normandy format in the Belarusian capital Minsk, Belarusia, bringing together Russian President Vladimir Putin, French President Francois Hollande, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and Ukrainian Nazi President Petra Poroshenko. The Minsk Accords sets in a ceasefire weaponry withdrawal, prisoner exchange, local election in Donbass, constitutional reform in Ukraine, and establishing working subgroups on security, political, economy, humanitarian components of the Minsk Accords. Now, I said in Ukraine, but of course, we're talking about Donbass. The Ukrainian Nazi forces and the army of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic have repeatedly accused each other of violating ceasefire and other points of the Minsk agreements. Yes, but we all know it is Kiev regime of Poroshenko that is starting these wars and attacking our children, trying to stop them from going to school. Well, it's not going to happen. Oh, and uh, by the way, a special hello to OSCE. I know you're listening. <laughs>